Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When the House Ways and Means Committee recently considered the health care overhaul proposal, I supported an amendment that said, if our constituents must join the government-run public plan, so should members of Congress. Unfortunately, the Democrats rejected this amendment. Madam Speaker, I ask today, if the government-run plan is great enough for the American people, why isn't it good enough for the members of Congress? Americans deserve the freedom to choose their health care. This plan doesn't give them that choice and will force Americans into a plan that supporters of the bill simply don't want. We need to work together to protect and strengthen the health care of every American, not take away choice and drive up costs. I urge my college to reject this bill, work together on a plan that lower costs while maintaining the freedoms of Americans to, cho to choose their health care. And that's just some straight shooting from the sheriff. Morning, Gretchen. I mean, this was an amazing thing that the administration wanted people to basically narc on their neighbor if they saw anything fishy. Uh, I guess I would describe that or interpret that as somebody who wasn't going along with the Obama health care reform plan. How did you see it? Oh, I saw it the same way, and uh, unfortunately, it's a pattern of intimidation we've seen by folks here in Washington who don't want people to speak up about defects and problems they see in the proposals that are coming from Capitol Hill. But you know, Gretchen, as long as we're identifying fishy statements that need to be outed, I would propose a couple of them. One is the uh, White House's claim that you'll be able to keep your private health insurance mm. if we go to a government-run or public option. The South Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Under the current health care proposal in the House, the health coverage of 16 million Americans who hold individual market health plans is in jeopardy. We've heard, if you like it, you can keep it. But this bill breaks that promise, takes away the freedom to choose, and drives up costs. Under the bill, private providers of individual health plans will be prohibited from enrolling even one new member. It's simple economics. Without new enrollees, the existing members will only get older, gets sicker, costs will skyrocket, and so will the premiums. Costs will prevent the providers from providing quality coverage. Costs will force these 16 million Americans out of their current health care coverage. This is not choice. This is not freedom. The second is we won't raise taxes on middle class taxpayers. Mm -hmm. I think those are among the fishiest that I've heard so far. Uh, Senator, um, what got this all started was Drudge had this uh, link to a video of uh, President Obama back in 2003, and uh, the White House uh, didn't like that and said that things had been all cobbled together and it was disinformation. And then they put out this blog on August 4th. They said, if you get an email or see something on the web about health insurance reform that seems fishy, send it to flag at whitehouse.gov. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to squeal on your neighbor, Let's say your neighbor sends, hey, I got this, uh, could this be right? It, the neighbor then would wind up forwarding it to the White House, and then suddenly, here you are just exercising your freedom of speech and your identity and some information that you have uh, emailed somebody is going to be in some database. How long are they going to keep my name if I'm a troublemaker because I was just saying what was on my mind? Well, that's exactly the reason why I wrote the letter, Steve, because uh, those, answer, those questions have not been answered, and uh, I think there are a lot of legitimate privacy concerns. No one expects that uh, when they exercise their First Amendment rights to ask questions or to complain about a proposed government program that they're going to be uh, listed on a, on a database in the White House. Oh, and on health insurance reform that seems fishy, send it to flag at whitehouse.gov. That statement was enough to trigger the latest round of GOP scare tactics. Today's purveyor of paranoia, Senator John Cornyn of Texas, accusing the president of compiling an enemies list. One email address at a time. Likening the White House truth squatting proposal as another example of Obama spyware. He wrote to the president, You should not be surprised that these actions taken by your White House staff raise the specter of a data collection program. I can only imagine the level of justifiable outrage had your predecessor asked Americans to forward emails critical of his policies to the White House. I am sick and tired of people who say that if you debate and you disagree with this administration, somehow you're not patriotic. And we should stand up and say we are Americans and we have a right to debate and disagree with any administration. And joining us
us now is Linda Douglas, Communications Director for the White House Office of Health Reform. Why do you feel the need right now to address this? Well, there's no question that we're moving into a different phase now as the debate moves away from sort of the inside the beltway discussions here in Washington back to people's neighborhoods and communities where health care crisis is really felt, you know, home in their neighborhoods and communities. Members are going to be going out around the country and the special interests are gearing up, pouring millions and millions of dollars to try to scare people as they always do with misinformation and disinformation. So it's very important now as the debate goes back into people's neighborhoods and homes, uh, that we make it very clear that the, what the president is talking about is health reform that will lower costs. It's going to protect you against unfair insurance regulations. But if you like what you have with your employer-based health care, you can absolutely keep it. The president has said that absolutely throughout. That is the message we want to be sure people understand, that they shouldn't be listening to the misinformation that is floating around out there on the Internet. Uh, my commitment is to make sure that we've got universal health care for all Americans by the end of my first term as president. I, I would hope that we set up a system uh, that allows those who can't go through their employer to access a federal system or a state pool of some sort. Uh, but I don't think we're going to be able to eliminate employer coverage immediately. There's going to be potentially some transition process. I can envision a decade out or 15 years out or 20 years out. I happen to be a proponent of a single-payer universal health care plan. A single-payer health care plan. Universal health care plan. That's what I'd like to see. Uh, I think if we get a good public option, it could lead to single-payer, and that's the best way to reach single-payer. And next to me was a guy from the insurance company who then argued against the public health insurance option, saying it wouldn't let private insurance compete that a public option will put the private insurance industry out of business and lay the that I've spoken to, I mean every single one on CNBC, when I have said the president says over and over again that if you like your health care, you can keep it, they have said that's not the case in the long run. That is, private insurers try to compete against the government, and the government's not trying to make a profit. It will inevitably drive you know, private companies out of business, not all of them, but a lot of them, and chances are you will not get to keep the insurance you have now. Uh, I think if we get a good public option, it could lead to single payer, and that's the best way to reach single payer. And next to me was a guy from the insurance company who then argued against the public health insurance option, saying it wouldn't let private insurance compete, that a public option will put the private insurance industry out of business and lay <laughs> So for those folks, there will be affordable options, there will be a lot of choice and a lot of competition for affordable options. That's all we're talking about. All right, Linda, thank you very much for joining us. We do appreciate you uh, representing what the president's hoping to get out of health care reform and clearing up some of the information that's out there. I, I, and I, it's one point we have to, this is not what Obama's about. He's not about reforming the system. It is about taking government control of the health care system. That's what this is about. It is not about fixing what's broken. It's about changing it from a system that is run by the private sector. For example, I'll give you one great example, Medicare. There's one part of Medicare, it's called Medicare Advantage, that is private sector. And it's it's private sector run. It's a managed care program that is that the government gives money out and seniors can, can have a, a private sector, a completely private sector experience in, in, in Medicare. He wants to shut it down. So I'm telling you, he wants to pull the, you over into a government run plan where he can control well, the health care well, system. Uh, but I don't think we're going to be able to eliminate employer coverage immediately. There's going to be potentially some transition process. I can envision a decade out or 15 years out or 20 years out. I happen to be a proponent of a single-payer universal health care plan. A single-payer health care plan. Universal health care plan. That's what I'd like to see.